you're trying to put everything together. So it's going to sort of be bigger rather than smaller. Would anyone like to give a stab at this one? What do you think is your greatest common factor between all three of those? It's 5x squared. I'll use a different color. It won't show up real great. But you're going to multiply 5x squared to all three of them. Now, here's where I get some people that dig in their heels. Do I really have to write that three times? Well, no, I'll just mark it wrong when you mess it up inevitably, because if you don't write it, you can't see what's going on. You're not going to see what cancels out and what's still there. So I guess it's up to you. And if you can do it mentally, that's cool. Some people have a calculator in their head and they can just do it. So that's fine. So looking at the first fraction, do you see how one of the X's is going to cancel? Like we have an X squared and then an X. Are you with me here? All right. What would be left? after that x cancels? Well, it's 5x times 4, so all together, 20x. Good. Plus sign. Now we're going to do the one in the middle. You just do them one at a time. What cancels out for that one? Good. What's left is 5 times 1, which is just 5, equal sign. And then what cancels for the last one? Yeah, like the whole everything. And so you're just left with one. The problem sort of disintegrates. And now you're left with basically an algebra one style problem. What would you do to solve that? Yep, minus the five. So that would be one minus five, negative four. Divide by 20, that'll reduce to negative one fifth. Now, do we keep that or do we get rid of it? I kind of crossed all these out, so I'll just erase them and look. Who would be your troublemaker? This is kind of tricky and it does get people. What number would make these denominators zero? It, zero. Um, X can't be zero. Did we get zero? No, we got negative a fifth. So we're good and we can keep it. But zero would have been the number that you would have to get rid of. All right, so looking at this one, what's your common denominator for these? Trying to put it all together. 4x, yeah, don't overthink. You're like, 4x? Yeah, don't overthink. You're going to multiply 4x to all three of those. And yes, that one counts as its own separate term because it's separated by that minus sign. And then you just do them one at a time. What cancels for the first one? I'm going to cover all this up. Just look at the first one. X, good. Now you're left with, good, it's four times x plus one, but you would need to distribute the four through that. So what would it actually give you? Good. 4x plus 4 equals, and here I'll cover up everything we don't want to look at. For that next one, you're left with 4x times 1. Do you see how nothing cancels because it wasn't a fraction in the first place? So what have you got there? Just 4x. And then what cancels for the last one? 4x. Now this is kind of tricky. Negative signs are. You're left with everything in the numerator, but do you see how we're subtracting the whole thing? So what would you need to do? You're gonna switch the signs for everything. You're gonna distribute a negative. So it'll be minus x squared plus three x plus four. Negative signs are difficult. Ahead of them. <laughs> like eight silly pills for breakfast. All right. Now I need to like kind of condense this down. Do we see any like terms that can go together specifically on this side? Because that's really kind of long. Do you see anything that's going to go together? Yeah, 4x and 3x. Also, I prefer to write it like in descending order. So I'm going to write the negative x squared and then it would be plus 4x and 3x. So 7x, yeah, I know, the negative canceled out. And then plus 4. All right, then you want to evacuate. It kind of doesn't matter which side you evacuate everything to, but I will tell you what I would do in this one. I would actually move all three of these terms to the other side. Can you think of a reason why I would do that? Yeah, I want this to be positive. You can move everything over here. I find it really difficult to factor if that x squared is negative. Um, so I'm going to move all of this to the other side. And again, try to line it up. Like it's really more about organization than anything else. 
but I'm evacuating all of this to the other side. You want it to equal zero. If you have an x squared, you're probably gonna have to factor, and so it needs to equal zero. So lining it all up in order, that would give us x squared and then what? Minus three x. Oh, and that's it, equals zero. So we are gonna factor, but you don't do this. You cannot do this and draw your two sets of parentheses. Why not? Why not? Yeah, you have to take an X out. It's GCF, greatest common factor. So if you take out an X, you're going to be left with X minus three. And so you get two answers. What do we end up with? Well, three is this one. The other one always throws people off. It's just going to be zero. If you set X equal to zero, you just get X equals zero. And then this one gives you three. Now you check them. Go back to the original problem, and here I'll erase because I had scribbled all this out. Who is your troublemaker that would make these denominators zero? Zero. Oh my gosh, we got zero. He's a troublemaker. Kick him out. And now here's a common mistake I get with this. People will then write no solution. And it's so sad because everything else is right, and then I have to take off half a point for that. Why is the answer not no solution? Yeah, there's still a solution, but you would not believe how many times that happens. And I get why it happens. They're not stupid. They just cross something out, and they're like, oh, no solution. But if there's another answer, then you have an answer. Okay. All right, for this one, you're going to have to factor this denominator first before you can proceed with the problem. So just, I would put it right below there, draw your two parentheses. And so what is that going to split into? Oh my gosh, it came out to X minus three, X plus one. Shocker, right? <laughs> not really. Why is it not surprising that it came out to that? That's, I made the problem. And do you see how I appreciate you? You're like, you made the problem. And it's the same as those two. Now, again, here's where I get people that dig their heels in here. That's your common denominator. So you really should write X minus three, X plus one, X minus three, X plus one, X minus three, X plus one. You should write it to all three of them. If you don't want to, I guess I can't make you, but you will see visually what cancels and what stays. And here's my other pep talk to that. I could pull a five-year-old in here and tell them to write the same thing three times. It's not hard. Um, and it didn't even really take that long. So that, that's my pep talk. I'm not gonna say that again, but just, just write it, okay? So when you look at the first one, I'll cover all this up. What cancels? Good, cancel those. So what's still there? You can see what's still there. And five, okay, and you have to distribute the five. So that'll be five X minus 15. Very good. Did I lose you? Okay, equal sign. Now I'm gonna cover everything else up. Look at the one in the middle. What cancels? The whole thing. So you're left with six, that's great, plus sign. Look at the last one. What cancels? X minus three. So what are you left with? At times one, which isn't going to change any. I mean, you can distribute a one, but it's just going to be X plus one. Cool. Do you see a squared anywhere? No. So we do not need to evacuate. It's just a regular old algebra one problem. What would you do next? Like terms. Perfect. Six and one. So you get five X minus 15 equals x plus seven. It's always like terms. This is welcome back to algebra one, ninth grade, or whenever it was you took algebra one. All right, then what? Minus x, minus x so you get four x minus 15 equals seven. Plus 15, no, you're good. You could minus the seven, but I think it'd be easier to plus 15, so 22. And then divide by four, that's gonna reduce, will be 11 over two. Let's check it. Who were the troublemakers? There were two of them. Three is one of them and negative one. We didn't get three or negative one though, so we're good. 
hang in there with me. This is only what 10 problems. You gotta be able to make it through 10 problems with me. I'm not gonna do a break. We're just gonna finish them so we can be finished. All right, what's your common denominator for this one? Oh, X plus two. So we're gonna multiply an X plus two to everything. And yes, that X by itself counts as its own term. It is separated by that minus sign, that subtraction. Uh, so it counts as its own thing. So what cancels in the first term? Good, what are you left with? So you won't see what's left if you don't write it. Yeah, just X, yeah, perfect. Now this next one, nothing cancels because it wasn't a fraction. So you have all of it, it's X times X plus two. When you distribute that X, what are you gonna get? Like, perfect, perfect. And then the last one, those cancel and you're just left with minus six. Do you see an X squared? Yes, that means you're gonna have to evacuate. So subtract this X over, line it up. You need to make it equal zero so that you can factor it. That'll be uh, what X squared plus X minus six, beautiful. Draw your two parentheses. So we're gonna get two potential answers. Uh, let's see, what is that gonna split into? Negative two and positive three. So that's gonna give you, good, perfect. Check them. Who was your troublemaker? Actually negative two. Did we get negative two? No, so we're good. We get to keep them both. That was tricky though, because it was just off by a negative sign. Are you guys, now we're flipping the paper over. Do you remember this a little bit from last year? No, not at all. <laughs> you did do this. But when I taught it, I used this exact note sheet. It's like not any different. All right, look at number seven. Are we all on number seven? Are you with me? Okay, so we're all on number seven here. You're gonna need to factor this two X minus two before you can decide what the common denominator is. So you can take a two out, what would be left? X minus one, good. Okay, these guys are already done with the problem. Hold on a second, everybody with me. Um, your common denominator would be two times X minus one. That is your common denominator. So you're gonna multiply two times X minus one to everything. Just write it three times. It's worth it. It will save you time later. And Good. You took the two out because of the, that one problem. Yes, you always wanna factor first before you decide what the common denominator. Basically always factor everything first. Yes, ma'am. Because there's a two there. Like basically the common denominator has to take everything into account. If you don't, then it won't cancel. Right, but it still has to be there or it won't cancel. Common denominator means you're putting everything together. So they share the X minus one in common, but you need that two because it's there. If I didn't put the two, the two wouldn't cancel and you'd still have a fraction. You want all the fractions to go away. So if it's there, you need it. If, if it is there, you need it. So look at the first one. Let me cover all of this up so you can just look at the first one. Hey guys, I feel like we're losing our collective focus. I get why that happened, but let's try and reel it in. What's gonna cancel in this one? Good. So those are gone. Now what's left is two times X minus six. What would that give us? Good, two X minus 12 plus sign. Now, when you look at the one in the middle, what's gonna cancel? Good, and so see, if we didn't put the two there, the twos wouldn't cancel, and then it wouldn't go away. You need it to all go away. So what's left? 10X, perfect. Equals, now nothing cancels for that because there wasn't a fraction to start with. So you just have all of it. So here, I'll talk you through it. Two times two, it's four, and you have to distribute the four 
into the parentheses. So, perfect. Good. Good job, guys. Do you see a square? No. So you do not need to evacuate. It is just a regular old algebra one problem. You're going to do like terms and then just solve for x. So what are our like terms? Yeah, 10 and 2. So that's going to be 12x minus 12 equals 4x minus 4. All right. And then minus 4x over, that'll be 8x minus 12 equals negative 4. Plus 12, negative 4 plus 12, be 8. So we get x equals 1. Then you have to check it. Look back at the original problem. Who is our troublemaker? 1. So you have to get rid of it. And so in this case, it is appropriate to put no solution. Now, as my pep talk, because some people are cool with that and it bothers some people. They have like an abandonment issue. Like the problem is not, or they'll say this, we did all that work for nothing. No, you did all that work to get the correct answer. And no solution is actually a pretty all encompassing answer. Give me a number. That will not work. Give me another number. That won't work either. Give me another number. Get your head up off the desk. No number on God's green earth is gonna work. So it's actually a very important answer because some people get upset by that. So that's just my pep talk. All right, number eight. What is your common denominator? X squared. You're going to multiply all of these by an X squared. Here's the other thing. If you're like, I can't figure out what the common denominator is. If everything doesn't cancel, you picked the wrong thing. You know what I mean? So if you try hard enough, you'll eventually come up with it. So what do we have for the first term? X squared, good. One X squared equals, good, these cancel, so it's just two. Minus, now one of the X's cancels, so just one left, so one X. Do you see a squared? That means evacuate. Now, it doesn't matter which side you evacuate to, but I think it's best to leave the x squared positive. It makes it easier to factor. So I'm going to move all of this stuff to the left. So we're going to add the x, subtract the 2. And then you want to put it all in order. So it'll be x squared plus x minus 2. Hang in there with me. We're almost done. And then we'll factor it and we'll get two potential answers. You have to check them. So what's that gonna factor into? Good, perfect. X plus two, X minus one. So that will give you negative two, positive one. And then check them. Who are your troublemakers? Or actually there's only one. Zero is the only troublemaker. So you get to keep both of those. You ready for the word problems? <laughs> no, because it's only 10 problems. We're going to just keep going. You can make it through 10 problems. All right. The only difference between a word problem and not a word problem is that you have to read. Okay. I know. Bummer. If you can't figure it out on a test, make something up and then solve your invented problem because I can use, I will bend over backwards to give you points. If you correctly solve your made up problem, I will give you something. I'm not joking, like make it up, okay? But I believe you can get through this. What does the word sum mean? Adding, so look, you're gonna have something plus something equals something. And if you even want to just set up blanks, you can do that. Something plus something equals something. That's what sum means. You're adding. As an extension, which word means subtraction? Do you guys know that? Difference. What means multiply? Product and divide quotient. Oh, but you remember dividend. That's cool. I like that. All right. Uh, sum of three times the number. How would you write three times the number? That'll go on this. Three, good, see, you guys got this. Now the second part's a little tricky. 10 times, so we're gonna have 10 times something. The reciprocal of the number, all right, real quick. 
What's the reciprocal of four? Good. What's the reciprocal of eight? So what's the reciprocal of X? One over X. You just want the reciprocal of the number. Good. See, you guys got through that. Is so equals 17. Boom. There's the problem. We set it up. Go us. Now you just got to solve it. So when I say what's the common denominator, what's the only thing that's in a denominator? X. Do you see how X is the only thing that's in a denominator? There. Okay. So you're going to multiply all of these by X. To make it cancel, that's the point. You want the fraction to go away. We don't like fractions, we want them to go away. Well, I like fractions, but I don't know you guys probably. So what do you have for the first term? Three, X squared, good. Plus, now watch what happens here, and this was the whole point. What happens to these X's? They, that bye-bye. So it's just 10, that was the whole point. Equals 17 times X is, 17x. Do you see a squared? That means evacuate. My calculus students still say evacuate because every time we have to factor something, they're like, evacuate. I'm like, good, you listen to me. All right, so 3x squared minus 17x plus 10 equals zero. You want to put it in order. We're going to factor it and get our two answers. So how will that Oh, we're going to have to guess and check here. We might not guess right on the first try. What multiplies together to be three? Three and one. X, good, thank you. I should have said that. 10 is probably two times five. Um, it is going to matter where we put them, though. I think we want the five here, because five times three will be 15. Are you following me through that thought process? 15 and two will be 17. Now it needs to be negative 17. So they're both going to be minus. So what are our two answers? Five. Yeah, five and, oh, good, two thirds. Perfect. The only troublemaker would have been zero. So we get to keep both of them. All right, and then last one. I made this up to be silly. You guys do get that math word problems are silly. They've been silly since kindergarten. Susie has 12 watermelons and Bobby has 18 watermelons. You know what I mean? It's silly. Get on board. Jack can find a needle in a haystack in three hours. Jill can find it in five hours. How long will it take them if they work together? The other common problem of this is like you're filling up a swimming pool and you have two hoses. One hose can do it in a certain amount of time. The other can do it in a certain amount of time. But if they're working together. So look, if he can find it in three hours, and she is helping him. They should be able to do it faster. So your answer should be less than three. And if you even write that on your paper, I'll give you something. And if your answer comes out to bigger than three, you have done goof. Because if he can, and I wrote finding a needle in a haystack to be silly, but just think of it as completing a task. If he can complete a task in three hours and she's helping him, they'll get it done quicker. Is this common sense? Now, realistically, sometimes tasks take longer with more people because you start talking and blah, blah, blah. But we're going to pretend that we're just going to do the math problem and leave that out. All right. So real quick, if he can do a full task in three hours, what fraction of the way done is he in one hour? One third. So it's going to be one third X. Plus, because she's helping him, if she can do a task in five hours, what fraction of the way done is she in one hour? He's a fifth of the way done. Does that make sense what I did there? All right. Equals one because I picked one hour. What fraction of the way done are they in one hour? Now, I usually get asked this. Can you do something other than one hour? Yeah, but why on earth would you pick a number other than one? Don't do that. What's your common denominator between three and five? Good, you're gonna multiply everything by 15. There will be an X, so you're correct, just hold on. What do you have for this first one? 15 divided by three. So five X plus, Wait, I want to answer your question. Are you sure? Okay. 
Well, you write it your certain way. Do it how it works for your brain. It's just my brain. Oh, okay. I can't fix that. It's just like a one third. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, if you want to write it this way instead, hold on a second. Let me just get everybody on, on board. You'll be okay. If you want to write it as X over three plus X over five equals one, does that help you? Yeah. Okay. And we're going to multiply them. If, if you didn't want to do that, don't do that. I'm just helping her out. Okay. So now, what do you have for this first part? 15 divided by three. So 5x plus, this one would give you 3x, 15 times 1, 15. Do you see a squared? No. So you do not need to evacuate. Just a regular old problem. 5x and 3x is 8x. And then you'll divide by 8. So 15 eighths hours. Real quick, I'm going to type that in the calculator. 15 eighths is 1.875. So did we get an answer that made sense that it's 1.875? Yeah, they should have been able to do it faster than three hours. 